Hey guys, welcome to my channel. So in this video, we are going to look at the pharmacology part of the anti-epileptic drugs. So what is epilepsy? Epilepsy is nothing but as the paroxysmal cerebral dysrhythmia. So it is paroxysmal cerebral dysrhythmia. So epilepsy, we have generally two types of seizures. We have the generalized seizures as well as the partial seizures. In terms of partial seizures, we have the simple partial seizures and complex partial seizures. In terms of generalized seizures, we have generalized tonic-clonic seizures GTCS we have absent seizures as well as the myoclonic seizures so we have two types of seizures generalized and partial in the partial we have the simple partial and the complex partial seizures in the generalized seizures we have the generalized tonic-clonic seizures GTCS absent seizures as well as the myoclonic seizures now let's learn about the classification of the anti-epileptic drugs in the terms of classification of the antiplatelet drugs, the first group is called as the hydantoins. So the first group is called as the hydantoins. We have phenytoin as well as the phosphenytoin. So phosphenytoin is the prodrug of the phenytoin. So this is the first group hydantoins. The second group are the barbiturates. We have the phenobarbitone in that group. And followed by the third group that is the immunostilbenes. And in that we have the carbamazepine as well as the oxcarbazepine. So we have immunostilbenes, the third group we have in that we have carbamazepine as well as the oxcarbazepine. The fourth group of the uh, anti epileptic drugs we have the carboxylic acid derivatives and again this is an important drug in this group that is the sodium valproate. The fifth group is called as the succinamide and in that we have ethosuximide. The sixth group we have the benzodiazepines. In the benzodiazepines we have the diazepam as well as the lorazepam. We have diazepam as well as the lorazepam. Then finally the sixth group we have the newer anti-epileptic drugs such as the lamotrigine, levetiracetam, topiramide as well as the lacosamide. So these are the newer anti-epileptics. We have lamotrigine, levetiracetam, topiramide as well as the lacosamide. So this is the classification of the anti-epileptic drugs and it's a very important question in terms of UG examinations so make sure you know it the first group are the hydantoins we have the phenytoin and the phosphenytoin second group are the barbiturates we have phenobarbitone the third group are the immunostilbenes we have the carbamazepine and oxcarbazine we have the carboxylic acid derivatives such as the sodium valproate or you can also call it as valproic acid the fifth group is the succinamide in that we have ethosuximide then we have the benzodiazepines such as diazepam and lorazepam. Then we have the newer antiepileptics. They are the lamotrigine, levetiracetam, topiramide as well as the lacosamide. So finally moving on to the mechanism of action of the antiepileptic drugs. So again mechanism of action is very very important. So make sure you listen to it very carefully. Moving on to the mechanism of action of antiepileptic drugs. So for in the antiepileptic drugs, following the injection of the antiepileptic drug, it crosses the blood brain barrier after crossing the blood brain barrier it binds to the voltage dependent sodium channels in the brain it binds to the voltage dependent sodium channels in the brain it prolongs the inactivated state of the sodium channels it prevents the further entry of the sodium ions into the neurons for, by stabilizing the neuronal membrane and finally it inhibits the generation of new action potentials finally it prevents the spread of seizure discharges so I'm going to repeat it again, very important, note it down. Following the injection of anti-epileptic drug, it crosses the blood-brain barrier. It binds to the voltage-dependent sodium channels. It prolongs the inactivated state. It, uh, it also prevents further entry of sodium ions into the neuron. It stabilizes the neuronal membrane and also it inhibits the generation of new action potentials, finally preventing the spread of seizure discharges. Then we have the second thing that is the increasing the GABA activity so how can you increase GABA activity the one thing is that you have to increase the production of GABA so you can produce it is produced from the glutamic acid decarboxylase right we have drugs which stimulate the glutamic acid decarboxylase that is the GAD so by stimulating this we can increase the formation of GABA thus increasing the GABA activity or we can decrease the breakdown of GABA so how we can do that? We can inhibit the GABA transaminase. It's also called as GABA T. So we can inhibit the GABA transaminase. Thus the breakdown of GABA is decreased. Thus the total GABA is GABA activity is increased. So when the GABA activity is increased, there is increased chloride conductance into the neuron. That is the inhibitory post synaptic potential that is IPSP. So there is increased chloride conductance into the neuron. It causes hyperpolarization causing reduced neuronal excitability following then finally getting the anti-epileptic 
effect so following the increased chloride conductors it causes hyperpolarization causing reduced neuronal excitability so finally ending this lecture with a wonderful thought for the day that is educate yourself and deal with your insecurities to be happy on your own so note it down the thought for the day we have educate yourself and deal with your insecurities to be happy on your own so again thank you for watching video till the end make sure to subscribe and hit the like button and i hope you like this video and you can share this video with other friends and people who want to learn more about the family relationship part thank you thank you for watching and see you in the next video bye